Hey, hey, everyone. It's Naomi Wolf. Again, it's Naomi Wolf with Daily Clout, and I'm really honored to be doing this third in the series of heroes uh, in America and North America who are standing up and fighting back against un constitutional um, restrictions on our right to uh, keep our businesses, our right to make a living, our right to free assembly and um, freedom of speech and other things that are coming up in these really difficult times. And I'm honored to be speaking to Paul Damore today. Welcome, Paul. Hello, hello. Thank you, uh, Dr. Wolf, for having me on your show. Appreciate it. It's, it's my great honor. So you're a restaurant owner in the city of Boston, and I understand that you're involved um, in a a pretty serious fight right now. Do you want to tell us about it? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Um, it's basically a fight for survival. And the, uh, the survival mode has brought me to a place. Uh, my concern um, goes up more so than just myself and my immediate family, but my people, my army, which is uh, all my employees, 21 employees who, um, you know, are worried if they'll have a job in the weeks to come. Uh, if they'll be able to pay their rent, if they'll be able to survive, if they can put food on their table. Uh, a lot of things that have become very disheartening. Um, we've been put in a place as restaurants where we have nowhere to go. Uh, the restrictions uh, are endless and they are meaningless because at the end of the day, um, giving us now a, a 25% restriction is basically telling us to shut the doors. And uh, being a restaurateur for all my life, one location here in the north end of Boston for 32 years, having a thriving business, having fed everybody, you name it, from celebrities to lay people in this little place, and it's been, uh, it's been great. Uh, and now to see that, uh, that it may all go away is, is really you know, not, a, not a good thing, not a good thing. Let me so... Uh, can I just jump in and ask some kind of, of book type questions, Paul? So when you say restrictions of 25%, you're in Boston, the state of Boston, and are you saying that the governor has issued restrictions on restaurants in Boston that they can only be 25% full? Is that what that means? Yeah, basically, so our capacity is 25%, which is a very small number because a lot of these restaurants, family restaurants are small to begin with, so we don't have a lot of room. So I think it goes it goes deeper than just the governor saying, you know, there's 25 percent capacity. At the end of the day, people are so afraid um, that no matter even whatever whatever capacity you give, people are afraid to go out. Uh, and I think that's not healthy for the world. Yes, COVID is real. Yes, we have to be very careful. Yes, we should be safe. There is no question in my mind about all of that. But we also need to have a somewhat vibrant economy because if we don't have a vibrant economy how do we survive how do we pay our bills how do we put food on the table if you take that away we run into a lot of other problems that maybe people in government don't see but me being on the front lines I do see it I see the problem with alcoholism I see the problem with gambling I see the problem with suicide I've seen all these issues come firsthand because you know, we're in, the, we're in the front lines. You know, we see it. You know, people get depressed and a lot of things happen. And it's a trickle-down effect. And I, it breaks my heart to see these things happen. I understand. So I was just um, interviewing a, an emergency room doctor in Canada who was saying something very similar. He was saying that the health consequences he's seeing of the lockdown of people not being able to support themselves and feed their kids and make right. money you know, for themselves right. is leading to child suicidality and and domestic violence and alcoholism and, you know, and so when you say you've seen it, do you mean with people who whom you used to employ, who now have had to be laid off or in the community around you? Where are you seeing this kind I've, of stuff? I've seen it in my community. I've seen it within my workforce. I've seen it with, with friends. So I've seen it with everybody. There isn't one person around me that has been affected one shape or form with everything I just spoke about. Uh, it's it's real. It's happening. And it's just going to get worse because at the end of the day, you know, if you can't, if you can't do the bit, and, and I know we all have different needs. We all live in, in a different uh, place in our life, but we all need to survive. And if we can't survive, and unfortunately we need money 
it becomes an issue, you know, and, and I think the help that we need is not at a local level. It's not at a state level. It has nothing to do with the mayor of Boston. It has nothing to do with the governor. It's with the federal government. We need the federal government to step in, you know, and worry about the people. You know, small stimulus checks are not the answer. Right. That's not that's not even a band-aid. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So do you want we just read the stimulus bill and it's got you know help for giant corporations but it doesn't really have targeted help for the restaurant industry which i understand has lost a hundred thousand businesses nationwide Mm -hmm. do you want a check from the government or do you want to be able to open your doors and see people in a reasonable way like what's your dream outcome for the fight that you're fighting well, I, I think based on the situation, I, I'm not going to be able to change what the government says. There's no way I can I could sit here all day tell you what I want. So what I do is I'll try to conform to certain things and and, and, and as a business person, okay, what's going to be the best best way to go forward? What I say the best way to go forward is that the government helps restaurants, and I'll speak about restaurants because I'm a restaurateur, helps us with a stimulus package. Then in turn, the restaurateurs make sure that they keep their people employed, okay? Right, right. So, yeah, so they can feed their family. Then we, as restaurateurs, figure out how to bring our business back, assuming that going forward, you know, things go in the better direction. You know, I try to be positive in my thoughts and hope that, you know, the corona is going the other way. Uh, hopefully the vaccine and whatever else happens, uh, maybe restrictions get um lesson and then we can head in the right direction and then we could be okay come this Good. summer so basically my- you're in a situation and i've heard this from many restaurant and bar owners where you have a workforce they rely on you they've got families you've trained them they they're professionals and you literally get an edict from the the state governor saying you have to go down from 100 percent to 50 you have to go from 50 to 25 and you also can't plan as i understand it right you don't know how much food to order you know you don't know who to employ you don't know who to lay off and who to bring back it must be it must be hell trying to even keep your doors open in a situation like that is that correct it's correct yeah so since this happened i developed um four different business models um and two out of the four were very successful they, they worked but picture a business guy you know usually in a lifetime you develop one or two models and you're good i've done four in less than a year so i i'm I'm, you know i'm constantly changing the way i do business what i do to bring in more income so i can keep my people afloat and you know it's it's trying it's very very trying you know then i'm retraining my staff every day we went from go ahead no no go ahead uh no i i'm just it's kind of it's not really like running a business in a capitalist economy, is it? I mean, you're 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 you really don't have a lot of autonomy. You're waiting to shift your business model to right. accommodate regulations that you have no input into. Right. And, and and it sounds like it doesn't sound to me like the governor is or the Department of Health is sitting down with restaurant and bar owners and saying, OK, what can we figure out together right. to keep everyone safe, keep your doors open, keep your people right. employed? Is that happening at all with restaurant no. owners? No, no, with me it's not. And I don't hear and I don't hear it. I don't hear it in the industry. Because at the end of the day, um, and I know a lot of people in this business, we care about our businesses. We were we were playing by the rules way before COVID. I mean we did it we do we basically operate the same you know um, keeping you know keeping things sanitized making sure, you know, outside of the masks and the six-foot distance, I mean, we've always operated in, in an operation that, that makes mm-hmm. sense. So restaurants are not the cause of the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, can it happen in a restaurant? Of course, again, it can happen anywhere. Right. It can happen anywhere. But at the end of the day, to, to pick and choose, you know, restaurant restaurants and say, you know, it seems like they're the only problem. You know, mm-hmm. we know we know all the big companies like the Walmarts, the Home Depots, you know, they're running rampant, they're busy, God bless them. But at the end of the day... I don't see how it makes any sense. So um, I, I think that, you know, we need, we need to, you know, we need to loosen up a little bit on the restrictions, you know, I really do. Let me ask you. Um, so first, I just want to validate what you're saying from the work we've done at Daily Cloud. We read the bills every week and we've been seeing bill after bill sponsored by Democrats and Republicans to kill off entrepreneurs in the middle class. 
kill mm. off small businesses, kill them, kill them, kill them. And even the way the stimulus bill uh, was written, it basically is structured to make it very hard for small businesses to get that assistance and and really easy for giant corporations. And we've also seen, I've seen in New York State where I live, Walmart and Target are wide open, even during the right. depth of the lockdown, and right. mom and pop stores and restaurants right. had those, and that made no epidemiological sense. Mm-hmm. People are packed into the big box stores, and right. stores are, are, had to die. And there's, so there's a massive wealth transfer. I'm very cynical about this. I, I think that, you know, reading these bills, sole proprietors have been targeted by both sides, by giant corporations for a long time. They want your market share. That is my cynical read. I'm not asking you to agree with me. Having said that, um, when you uh, when you were told, now you have to pull back to 25%, were you given any peer-reviewed scientific studies to explain that formulation? We, yeah. No, actually, <laughs> what happened is the day that went into effect, we had someone coming from the state and kind of like, you know, pretty much pick us apart and say, well, you can do what you can't do. It just, yeah, no, no. We, you know, they give us a week notice, whatever it is, and then we got to go. But, but to your point, what you just said, to back up just a little bit. So the uh, the restaurant implosion, that's what I call what just happened, mm-hmm. um, is going to eliminate a lot of people. And you're right, it is hurting a lot of small businesses. But at the end of the day, um, it's taking away, away the competitive edge, too for all our small businesses, because when this is all said and done, everybody's not coming back. No. So, you know, the people who are left will be in a good spot, but you're going to hurt all those people who had a chance. Maybe not a true restaurant guy, a restaurant woman, whatever, but they were doing okay. They're not going to be able to be in it. They don't own their real estate. They're not going to be able to be in it. You know, so many of these variables that, unfortunately, um, they can't. They can't get over. They can't. They can't be. No, it really does seem like these policies. You know, we can't. I can't say they're designed to kill off. You know, I think restaurant implosion is a good phrase. That's what I'm seeing, and bars too. You know, the hospitality industry, yep. not in the giant corporations. All these sole proprietors. Mm-hmm. It is an implosion, and they're not coming back. And it almost seems like these policies are almost waiting out. You know these businesses to collapse i mean that's what i'm seeing you know and there as you say there's no i don't see any creative energy going into how do we keep this sector of the economy alive while this while we get through this i don't see any creativity going into that so when the health department people came and they said you have to do this and this and you have to restrict your your seating to 25 percent did did anyone in the mail, in in an email from the governor, from the health department, give you any science saying twenty five percent capacity in a restaurant has to be what you do because of this study? Is there any science justifying this change? There wasn't. A, no, there's basically uh, you know based on the numbers in the state of Massachusetts, and it wasn't the health department; it was someone from the state. But based on the numbers that, that we, we're seeing in the state, we feel that this is the, you know, the right thing to do, so we're going to go to 25%, which is basically just saying to us, like, be closed. Right. No, I hear you. So let's think about that for a minute. Even if, which would be very sad, numbers are going up, you know, as respiratory infections do every winter, and I, it's a serious respiratory infection. I don't mean to belittle it. I haven't seen, except for one or two studies that are not that strong, anything connecting higher rates of infection with restaurants. There's one study out of China and one study overseen by China um, that I've seen that shows that there can be bad transmission in restaurants. And we all know by now that, you know, closed spaces where there are a lot of people is not a good context for any respiratory infection. But I guess what I'm saying is, the studies that I've seen that are good show that home is the number one place people get sick. And I've, I haven't seen anything beyond 1.4% of infections, um, mm-hmm. transmissions happening in restaurants. And even there, the studies I've really read carefully, you know, a, a virus doesn't have an address. You really can't say, well, it was at, 
you know, McDonald's versus, you know, Subway, that this virus jumped into this human being. So right. I, I truly, and I haven't seen any studies that show that in American restaurants, which may be very different from, you know, this one Chinese restaurant in China that, you know, the famous study is based on, I haven't seen any studies showing that people get sick in American restaurants with good ventilation, mm -hmm. proper hygiene, proper sanitation. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen anything showing in America that, 100% to 50% is an improvement, or that 50% to 25% is an improvement in infections. Has anyone presented any data like that to you? No one has. So we really don't know, based on science, that emptying out restaurants has a direct effect on infection rates or fatality right. rates. Or at least I, they I just in the beginning, if they said, okay, this... Let's see what where uh, where where were the most businesses per capita and what are the businesses and they said oh it's restaurants so I think that's probably where the problem you know they they made an assumption you know and who knows what kind of studies they did if any and you know there's a lot of restaurants in the United States of America right. there's more restaurants than anything else so they're like okay that must be the problem that's where it's right. coming yeah no I hear you but I mean it must be super painful if you let yourself kind of be open to the possibility that the people making these decisions don't have the science to back it up. It is very difficult. But the, the thing is, what do you do as a, as a small, you know, we're all individual restaurants and as much as we all communicate within our little uh, restaurant group, like say here in the north end of Boston, what can we do? What can you do? Where's the lobby? I mean, do you guys have a restaurant owner's lobby? Is there any kind we of have, organization? Yeah, there's, there's a group, there's an organization, the Mass Restaurant Association speaks on our behalf. Uh, we've met with them a few times uh and you know there's there's uh they developed a board with the governor that had some uh, restaurant people on it which was good uh but again you can't be in the heart and soul of a restaurant unless you're a small operator right and like those groups that were with the state they weren't small operators they don't understand like a guy like me how i operate and uh the little mom and pop shops you know it's it's certain breed that's a certain breed and, and then you know when you have these these groups that are that are that are representing government that are restaurant people that are running operations that have two three hundred seats you know they have money behind them so it's a little right. different as opposed to a place that has 40 seats that has no money behind them they, they you think differently you think well i was going to say they're actually your competitors right right they don't want us around they don't want you around <laughs> so big smaller restaurants don't have their own lobby and you really no. don't have voice with the government to say, wait a minute, this is, well, you know, there, there are consequences to wiping out these, these businesses. You, you really don't have a voice. You don't have a voice. No, no, no. Have, and you know, if you had, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, um, have you tried to kind of call the governor's office directly and book a meeting with, you know, representing? Yep. I've, yep. I've, I've spoke with the, uh, I've spoke with the Lieutenant Governor. Uh, she, she, reached out to me um, and, and asked, you know, what can I do? And I said, I think it's out of your hands what you can do. It's, it's, it's again, I still think this is a federal issue. It's, it's not it's not state and local. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, the federal government needs to uh, be a little bit more lax because if not, you know, we're going to be in trouble. Like, you know, the, you know, Florida is wide open. I have a lot of friends that have businesses in Florida that are doing very well. Um, and, uh, you know, the regulations there aren't as strict as here. And people say, well, they got a lot of COVID cases. Well, so do we. And they're like, well, their weather's better. I'm like, I don't think it has anything to do with the weather. I think at the end of the day, if people are safe, no matter where you live, you ha you're, you're going to be in a better situation. If you're unsafe, it doesn't make a difference where you are. So wear a mask, fine. Clean your hands, great. You know, follow certain protocols no matter where you live. And we're going to be okay. Um, so why don't so, you... I, 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 sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Why would you... I, I get your um, wish in a mm. dream world to have a federal response to this, and I hear that, but the restrictions are at a state level, and the health department decision is at a state level. So mm. would it not make sense? I'm not trying to sway you in one direction or another to say to the lieutenant governor, it's wonderful that you have communication with that person. Um, you know, can you like move us back to 75%, you know, we'll install new ventilation or we'll, you know, keep 
sanitizing everything, but, you know, this, this is really too much and it's going to lose, you know, we're going to lose this part of the workforce and we're not going to be able to come back from this. What, right. what would he or she say to that? I'm sorry, I don't know who the lieutenant governor is. I, I uh, Karen Polito. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I could have that conversation with her, but I, I don't think it would, I really don't see how, how, I don't think it would have any impact, to be very honest. I don't think it'd have any impact because I think all the, all the, and I understand they're in a difficult position because all they, they look at safety, right? So they're not looking at the small restaurants and saying, what do we do to keep these you know, people going? They're just looking at safety, 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 which, okay, I get. But how do we survive? You know, so mm-hmm. the, the answer to what you're saying is, is going to be, well, because of the numbers, you know, so then I don't think they'll rewrite anything. That's why at the end of the day, I, I you know, I've, I've kind of thrown my hat on my mm-hmm. hat and said, what, I'm not going to... I'm not going to deal with the. I'm not going to deal with the city or the state. I no, understand. They, they're going to do what they want to do, and it's it's out of my reach. So I'm going to play by the rules, and hope that we get some kind of stimulus. Because if we get the stimulus, then we can we can operate, we can work, right. and then if people get better, things get better. People want to go out. People don't want to stay home. I, I love to go out for dinner. I I want to go out for dinner. I want to hang out with my friends. I mean, I've gone with this whole COVID. I haven't stopped anyways. I want to go even more. Right. And, if things go in the better direction, people will start coming out. They'll start spending money. My staff will start smiling. You know, people will be happy. I can hire the new hostess and <laughs> whatever, whatever it takes to operate. Understood. Have you been asked to, to install new ventilation as part of the... Uh, no, we have, we have not. Have, have they looked at your windows? And, I mean, fresh air does keep things safe. So I'm really interested that health departments are just closing businesses instead of saying open the windows, provide better ventilation. Nothing like that. No air filters have been requested. No, if, no air filters. I mean, uh, we have uh, so we have two floors. The one floor has a big window. We keep that open in the good weather. Obviously, it's the winter now, so only on nice days we'll open it up. Uh, we try to get as much fresh air as we can in the restaurant, obviously. But- By the health department. That's just something you're doing? Yes, 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 yes. I mean, we. Should, I mean, I try to stay proactive and everything, just because I, I want to be ahead of it too. Because of I don't course. want, I don't want, you know, I don't want it to happen. But basically, you know? if you weren't so aware of that. The health department in Massachusetts has said clear out these tables, but has not said open the windows or install a ventilation system or an air filter. That no, no. Not, again, not based on science because right. they haven't said any of that. No, no. That's really- Ordinary. Does your staff want to work, even given that there is coronavirus in Massachusetts? So, very, very good question. So, when we closed down for three months, I created a delivery model, and I picked a 30-mile radius north of the city. Uh, super successful. Very, very busy. I, I, actually, I was, I was so busy. I hired seven new people, including my 21. So, I had a, I was, it was crazy. So, do people want to work? Yes. State, those same people could have went and collected and made good money doing nothing. They came to work. So people, yep, people want to work. Yeah. Yeah, I just hired a new person yesterday. People want to work. Right, people right. want to work. Well, and, they don't want to stay. And, and would they want to work in the restaurant if you were allowed to be at, say, 50 or 75% capacity? 100%. Yeah. Of course. You know why? Because restaurant people make a lot of money. Gotcha. And when you say, let's go back just to the question of your, your workforce. So if you, God forbid, have to close down 25 people will lose their jobs for good, right? Okay. Yep. God forbid. And when uh, you say, you, I'm sorry, God I forbid. Knock, knock, knock on wood. Right. Yeah. And so you're employing 25 people is the point. And letting people eat your food safely is keeps 25 people, you know, from unemployment and in good jobs, feeding their families, you know. And and when you we were talking about the harms of these restrictions, you have any of your staff, you know, said or expressed, I'm really worried about losing my job because I don't know how I'll take care of my family or I don't know how I'll pay rent. Yes. Do you any of that from your staff? Can can you All share? Of them. Everything. Sentiments, people. Every, every single one of my staff has, at one point or another, asked me that question. Because for me, you know, what I could have did a few months back when we got the stimulus money is I could have said, okay, I have X, Y, Z in the bank. I'm going to shut down, wait till everything gets better, come back. I'll have the same amount of money in the bank. I'll be fine, right? But no, I didn't. I said, uh-uh, can't do that. Got to take it in Miami. Miami's my staff. And that's what I did, and I'm thinking in Miami. So now we're at a point where it's it's crucial, critical, very, very difficult. 
you know, they know, we know it, but, you know, I'm a fighter, so I believe in, you know, you work hard, you get rewarded, so I'll continue to work hard, you know, and my staff sees it, I put on a happy face, I do the right thing, I, I work as hard as them. Um, so speaking from a from a, a personal point of view, you know, we're going to make it. That's just right, and that's what I believe in. But um, not everybody else is the same. There's a lot of my friends that are closing down their restaurants, and they're saying they're going to go in hibernation, which I don't really know what that means because, um, you know, you sometimes when you close, you don't reopen. Uh, right. You know, your customers, you know, they, they're going to be like, okay, during during the tough times, you gave up, you ran away, now you want to come back? Well, you know what? I went to so-and-so now, and they worked hard during these times. I'm going to give them the business. So that's, that's a tough one. And I'm not saying they did the wrong thing, but they hibernate because they have no money. Right. It's, force. Right. it's, it's a forced position. Um, right. It's like a chess game. You know, it's, if you could, it's, right now it's, 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 it's tough. So basically the stimulus money, uh, just to be frank, has run out, or is it about yes. to Oh, no, it's gone. It's been gone for a while. Oh God! So you're in. So you're you are facing a very. Oh, we're, in we're in it. We're in it. I mean, right now, it's like we're we're looking at the battle of the gun. We're our eyes are staring on the battle of the gun. I'm so sorry. Have you spoken to your senator at all? Do you think that, or your representative? Do you think they could it be a voice for you with uh, the federal government? <clears throat> so it, you know, it's interesting you say that. Through this uh, through this whole ordeal of uh, Corona. I can't remember the last time I even saw a senator speak about Corona and restaurants. No. Uh, uh, they're the ones who are supposed to help. I, I haven't heard anything from that. I mean, you, Nothing. everybody's, you know, the, the people are supposed to speak for us. Really, I haven't heard much about them. Right. right. No, I understand. I understand. You know? Well, it sounds like you're doing everything anyone could possibly do. Uh, oh, if there's, yeah. if you want me you know, is there a last message you want to send out? Um, what, like, in your solution, apart from stimulus money, what other policies should there be to support restaurant owners like you? I mean, and also should people just, is there also a message for people in the community to be like, you know what, wash your hands, put on a mask, go to a restaurant, take off your mask and have a meal to support yeah. this community yeah. of people who are working hard? Yeah, and I basically I can reiterate what you just said, but you just said it all. Basically, play by the rules because the rules are there for a reason. It's okay. You can wear a mask, wash your hands. That's all good. Support your local businesses. Doesn't even if it means buying two apples from the local guy who sells, you know, sells food. Very very important. If you support your local business, then we'll have a trickle down effect. And from a federal federal government point of view, I think like, um, and and I know everybody said, oh, you know, they gave too much money to people who are un unemployed. That actually stimulated the economy because those people went out and spend that money. You know, right, right. now they're giving three hundred dollars. I don't think it's enough. Right. Three hundred dollars is not enough. Right. And that stimulus check, it's a waste of time. I think they shouldn't even give the stimulus check. I think it's just not. It, it's it's peanuts. I mean, if you go you go shopping for a family of four, it's two hundred dollars a week, yes. right? They, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It's an it's an insult to these families. Right. You, what are you going to get them by for for a week and a half, two weeks? Yeah. So the answer is go support your local restaurants yes. uh, and and more and more money for restaurant owners in the stimulus bill, so that you guys can yes. keep your doors open, hopefully another their six months and get through this difficult time. Exactly. And also, you'd like a seat at the table, maybe at a state level, to discuss these restrictions and hammer out solutions that are workable. Would that be? Would those be three wish list kind of yes. things? Yes. It, so, so I'm so sorry to hear about this situation and I wish you every, every support and for people who want to support you and support your community, tell, tell me again where your restaurant is located and what people sure. can do. So we're Massimino's Cucina Italiana. We're in the north end of Boston. We're at 207 Endicott Street and you can check out my website. It's MassiminosBoston.com. MassiminosBoston.com. And, uh, Join us. You know what I do too, just so you know. I do a Zoom cooking class. That's another one of my. Uh, oh my God! The other business model that I started uh -huh. out of uh, about a month ago, and it's, it's been good. So I've been teaching cooking all over the country. <laughs> that's fantastic. So that's another way that you can support that, exactly restaurant owner in this very very difficult time. And then um, offline, I'll circle back and and we'll put this up and we'll see if there are people in Massachusetts who would like to support you and other small restaurant owners 
in communicating with the lieutenant governor and the governor about finding policies to keep small restaurants and small business owners alive in this state. Uh, all right. Well, thank you so much, Paul Demore. Well, you're a hero. What you're, you know, I know you're going to go to heaven because a uh, lot of people would like. Hopefully, may you live to be 120, as my grandma would say. But you right. did the right thing by, you know, keeping your people employed, and 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 that will come back to you. Yep. I'm sure. We're trying. Yeah. Take good thank care. You. I appreciate it. Thank you, Doctor. Have a great day. Bye.